Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Between Two Fans with your boys, CBP and Mr. Dan Skultz. And it is episode 31 already, by the way. Like, I was actually thinking about this. You know, we, this has been going for quite a while, eh? Yeah, um, we, we, we're on a roll here, Stevie. Yeah. We're moving. Like, we, we passed the halfway mark without even acknowledging it. Yeah, we're, we're, we're on to a solid, solid, solid start at the moment. The question is, can we kick on, raise the back, get to 50? You know, we've, we've seen out the new ball. Yeah. Um so now it's the, the no. Yeah. <laughs> this is we're now in the situation now where Vietnam Wilder starts to sweat about getting that first test fifty, which <laughs> yeah. he still hasn't gotten. But we're gonna talk about it because he was man of the match, so <laughs> I feel like I've been vindicated with my backing. But um Lots to come in the show. We're going to be talking about the Rugby Championship, the Curry Cup, the Premier League is back. South Africa winning a Test Series, going into a T20 Series. Last talk about uh, the Rickers Duplicy, uh, the uh, still the champion of the world and uh, was some of the most successful uh, few weeks we've seen in South Africa sport with us just taking dubs on dubs on dubs. Cool. Dan, speaking of dubs, how are you? Yo, as you said, Stevie, I'm still buzzing off the weekend. Prem is back. I always, particularly now with the Olympics, I always struggle to get that excitement going. But now that it's there, the highlights are on. You're watching it in the background. It's unreal. Prem's back. Pro tiers with a series and test match win. Obviously, had to get up early for Drickus, and I believe it was last his last fight that I didn't get up for, and you did. So I, I believe mm. we, we we changed the baton this time. Um, and then of course it's the box, and you know, not suffering to the banana peel that is so often Australia just feels so good um, in testing conditions. So as you say, we're raining in dubs. It's a good week to be a South African sports fan. We have one week between the Olympics and the Paralympics to just get into the fun, the, the, the regulars. But next week, we'll be straight back and in, deep into the Paralympics. Yeah, so we were looking into the Paralympics today, but there's still no schedules confirmed. So we thought we we're going to push that back to next week so that we can give you guys an exact breakdown of what the South Africans are doing and where they are doing it. So, uh, yeah, lots to talk about. Dan, before we sort of get into some of the more sports, should we go back to the predictions? Because I think this is going to be a bit of a controversial one. It is, it is. And, and this is really where we're actually going to need you lot, the, the listeners, to really come in and, and help with this situation because it's it's been a bit contentious off camera. But let's let let's get the first two out the way. For those who are new around here, we predict on three different sporting events over the weekend. This week was South Africa versus Australia in the rugby championship, South Africa versus West Indies in the test match cricket, and then in the Premier League, uh, Man City versus Chelsea. So the race is to 15. The score is currently 13-12 to Stevie. So the stakes are high, and the loser must wear a sporting shirt of the winner's choice, likely a rival's. And the first prediction, let's get into it, Stevie, was South Africa versus the Aussies. It ended up 30 points to 12, South Africa winning by 18. Stevie, your prediction was 20, which I think you'll be quite stoked with, you know, considering you're two points off. It's just a pity I was by 17. So sneaking in. With that one, and and as much as you are the rugby guru, I've snuck in two um, Proteus or Springbok points over the last two weeks. I'll I'll take that. Definitely DMing Sasha about those that misconversion because that was the difference. That that bastard. Yeah, no, I I saw that one coming as well. Um, And then SA versus West Indies, Stevie, your prediction. Um, was by 80 runs or five wickets. Mine was by 115 runs or six wickets. So Africa ended up winning by 40 runs. So a bit closer than both of us thought, but you were definitely closer. So that takes us to 1-1. And then the final one and the contentious one, um, mm. City versus Chelsea. The end score was 2-0. Now, Stevie predicted 2-1. No, 3-1. I predicted 2-1. Mm. You predicted 3-1. So my argument is that I was only one goal away from my prediction being right. We, I mean, obviously, we both got the result right, a City win. So then what's the what's yeah. the next thing? Is it goal difference? As in Steve's 3-1 was the correct difference in margin. score, meaning was, yeah. the, the, the margin was two goals? Or is my 2-1 closer because I was only one goal away from that prediction becoming correct? So this is where we need... You lot. By how many goals does City win? By two goals. 
How many goals does Steve say this is going to win by? By two goals. So no, I predicted the right dominance, the you right said goal margin. At the end of the day, the Premier League is decided on goal difference, and I predicted the goal difference. What well, my argument is. I at least got one of the scores right. You got neither three nor one right. I at least got the two right. So yeah, but again, the margin, the dominance, the you know, yeah. So well, we we're putting it out to to you lot. We're gonna we're gonna need a bit of um, mediating here because we hadn't quite decided. You know, what is the the next thing? We actually haven't been in this position, funnily enough, before. So yeah. Um, we're leaving it out to you, and this would take either you into a 14-12 leave or take it to 13-13. So, very, yeah, very big, close big, and high stakes. Big. Big. Yeah, big. So, big. you know, not to, not to swear this, but I mean, a win for me would take would, would mean that Dan could be wearing a different shirt within like two weeks. Just saying. Yeah. yeah. Just throw it yeah. out there. Like we're in the, really the baggers in, dude. Uh, I think I, I, I back my argument. Okay, Stevie. Well, first of all, let's jump into what we usually jump into first, and let's start with the rugby. And let's start with the Booker. Twelve points to thirty away. Testing conditions: mm. four tries, two conversions, two penalties for us, and just the four penalties for Australia. Um, give us a little wrap on your thoughts of that game. Well, first of all, that might have been some of the worst conditions I've ever seen rugby being played in. Yeah, no, they were horrible. horrendous. Um, and it was interesting, you know, I was doing the player ratings and, and, and a couple of people, you know, were talking about how bad Monty Funnenberg was. And a lot of people were saying, you know, in his defense, absolutely horrendous conditions for, um, especially mm. his grandma, who has to touch the ball the most, has to pass the ball, has to try and manage the game. Yeah. Uh, but it was, it was horrendous conditions. So I thought that we weren't necessarily at our best. I don't think we we're ever going to be, um, you know, it was always going to take a while for things to sort of gel. Um, but generally, I thought um, it was a well-managed game. Uh, Sash Fine obviously struggled quite a lot. So it was maybe a, it was a very testing game for a lot of players. But I think the main thing, you know, going into the game was to get a victory. So the fact of the matter is this is a really poor Australian side because we didn't play particularly well. It's not our best side, and we still cleaned up, really. Yeah. Um, and we're never really we, at risk we, of losing. We, could, we left, probably left two tries out there as well. Yeah. Like, And they didn't really ever get close to scoring themselves. Yeah. The only pressure so, I mean, it, was really, was it really was job time. done, yeah. you know, in terms of bonus point, the victory, didn't concede a try. We've only conceded one try across the two games. You couldn't have really asked for a better tour. Um, certain players definitely uh, put their hands up, for example. Um, I was frustrated because I really wanted to see certain combinations and the conditions didn't allow. So I really wanted to see how Lacanio Am and Desi Creole were going to play as a center combination. Mm. And they had very little to do because it was 10-man rugby because it was just basically playing rugby in a bath um <laughs> but job done job done we're sitting 10 out of 10 points so very very chuffed and i think what we saw this weekend is that you know whilst it is a b team we, we we're finally sort of seeing what this depth we talk about actually looks like yeah. you know we've we've made a big thing about it in the past for example um but as soon as you like you know you lose against Ireland, everybody says oh but where's your depth where's your depth and it's like well that was pretty relevant because we didn't rotate against Ireland. now we're seeing what this depth means again it's against the bad australia side so it's difficult to really um know exactly how good it is but the fact of the matter is is that we've got a pretty wide squad um of players but when they come in and they come out, there's very little difference between your, your top players and your next best. Yeah, I think exactly. The fact that our second slash third string team beat Australia's first string team is by a bonus point away from home in such bad conditions. Like I genuinely think it would have been worse for Australia had the conditions been good because, as you said, Mourne van der Berg, and, and he was probably guilty of trying too much because I think he's mm. capable of that in regular conditions. And I think also he, I think that's how he sees himself. And it's probably what's being asked from him to be a bit like mm. the, a bit more creative, you know, like the, uh, the opposite to what maybe a Faf brings, which is that just, you know, the basics. And it was a game that would have suited Faf. You know, he would have brought yeah, such so composure to, yeah. to that type of game, just the, the kicking game, territories, you know, just the real basics and that that comes with also a lot of experience but yeah job done you know away from home we have 10 points on the board and i think it's really it's it's on to the on to the next next week and inviting the all blacks over who managed to get their first win stevie yeah and i think probably the first game where we've seen the all blacks 
look a bit more like the All Blacks last year. So during the World Cup, it it was the first really dominant performance. You know, I thought you know, well, it, it was against it's against Fiji, but um, again, kind of against Fiji, uh, which have got a good game in them, but not quite sort of sitting in the same sort of level as the sort of the tier yeah. one nations. This is the first one against a genuine tier one nation where they looked mm. um, close to their best. And I think Scott Robertson will feel a bit vindicated because I think he's been trying to get this kind of performance out of them. It hasn't really succeeded. But um, it was an interesting one because it was kind of a, it was quite a typical New Zealand performance in terms of they just came out so, so quickly. Um, yeah. I mean, ironically, they I think they bad. actually... People say Australia played, I mean, sorry, Argentina played badly. I don't think they necessarily played badly. They just didn't get an, get an opportunity to play well. Yeah. I, I mean, look, the, 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 the second strong. half, I think, was what, 7-7 seven, seven or, you know, I think it, yeah, it was... Yeah, it, it was pretty evenly, evenly contested. This, that first Zina half scored that last try, the, the, they, they scored their last try in the 42nd minute and then were scoreless for the rest of the 38 minutes. So Argentina got a lot better. But, you know, you know they were closing the gate well after the whole yeah. team You know, New Zealand came out dead, yeah. so quickly. Um, punished them, you know, scored five tries in the first half and said, yeah. thank you very much. We'll see you guys next time. And statement performances from largely the big ones for me were DMAC and TJ Perinara, yeah. who who were on the back of like a lot of backlash from the, um, you know, New Zealand public and questioning, you know, is this the way to go? Um, you know, that 9-10 combo, obviously mm. in rugby is so huge. And there were... As, as mentioned, a lot of question marks around their form and their capability to carry this team. And they both put in huge performances. Yeah. Um, David Kenzie was completely flawed to the T as well, for example. Um, yeah. Looked I a mean, lot better he, in... in those conditions as well. Yeah. Like, and he was, they were corner kicks, you know, they weren't underneath the poles. He was slotting them from everywhere. Yeah, no, much better for even Adi Sevier. You'll say, oh, you know, he's had a bad game as captain, for example. And, you know, as usual, topping tackle charts. I thought Ethan Black had a was really, really good as yeah. well. Got around the pop. People talking about the balance of that loose trios. I mean, John Curran was saying, you know, it was interesting. He's like, yeah, you know, at the end of the day, we basically got three number sevens playing. I was like, dude, you can't call Adi Sevier a seven after he's been playing at eight man full time for like four or five years. It's like yeah, calling yeah. Pierre Steph a lock. He used like, to be there when he's Kieran just Reed not was saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, like, as I said, you're not going to call Pierre Steph to a lock, are you? You're not going to call Jesse Creel a fullback. Yeah. You know, yeah, but it's, uh, I mean, they 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 are incredibly dynamic, and there's a lot of talk about Ethan Blackadder being, you know, a, a big thing in that All Black jersey and going to be around for a while. And you can kind of start mm. to see why he is an absolute unit and gets around the park. So, yeah, I mean, obviously it's Eden Park as well. They maintain their record. They go fifty and O, which is just ludicrous to think of. Did Did you see that? I think it was the third or the fourth highest. Um run of most wins <laughs> at a single venue Murray was the Field. All Blacks at Murrayfield. <laughs> oh, that, that, whoever made that had a bit of... He woke up on that the wrong is, side of the bed. He was pissed off for the I mean, Scottish. Sh- because sh- sh- imagine me a Scott, you know, it's the off-season and you're like, oh, you know, let me just watch a bit of rugby. It's a Saturday morning. You know, I had a couple of ales last night. Let me just turn on a bit of rugby in the morning and then just being ha- me attacked like that. Yeah. No, that's that that that's a, that's a really, really tough look. Um. But Stevie, we wanted to go through some of the um, Springbok performances from mm. the last game. Obviously, it's a very new team. So we've come up with a new segment. And essentially, we are giving three different awards out for three different players um, for the, the last game, depending on um, how they played. And essentially, the, the awards go like this. We've got the Sergio um, Parisi Award, which is essentially the player the man of the match, so he undroppable for the next game. We have the 2016 Boca Award, who is the player that is highly droppable, so a less than satisfactory game. And then yeah. the Carlos Spencer Award, essentially some sort of moment in the game producing a piece of magic. Um, and that way we can, you know, just, just highlight and bring a close on, 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 on the weekend and, and how that game was. So I want to hear your nominations, first of all, maybe for the undroppable Sergio Parisi award. Yeah, so that's Sergio Parisi, that, that stands that, you, you know, you, you, when you put, put a team list on, you basically got a permanent marker next to one name, you know, the one that, that just the entire well, team who, is who named has, Whose name just doesn't even get considered to be removed off? 
yeah, especially yeah, you know, now. When, especially when, now when, 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 when you copy, when you copy and paste the team on in, on Excel, you know, and then you delete it, you don't bother deleting his. You just you yeah. need everybody else around him. It has to be Peter Steff the toy um, yeah. at the moment. He's it's a boring just, nomination, but it's it is a very boring great. nomination. But he's just he was too good again. You know, um, notable uh, honorary mention to to Cheslin. Had another really good game, playing really good rugby at the moment. Uh, I thought mm. Fassi was uh, was very impressive in the conditions. Yeah. Shout out up to um, so weekend. I'll shout out because I thought he, he he stepped up a lot. And um, he's put his Jason... name on Vili Larue's like after Vili Larue's time and I played with Fassi is yeah. like playing the exact rugby he needs to to just fit in right there. Him yeah. and, and, if, him and if it wasn't so for a guy called Damien Villain, so he's coming yeah. back on, in a few weeks, you know, I think he, I think lots of people will be saying that in the long term, he's looking good. But the fact of the matter is he's going to stay in the block environment because he's keeping he himself there, yeah. which is good to see. Um, so for me, Peter Steph's toy probably has to be the one. I mean, another man, somebody like a Jesse Creel, for example, who's just week in, week out play at such a good level. Um, you talk about an undroppable player, he's kind of there. Uh, and the reason that you know, he's almost worthy of being spoken about more so than Peter Steph the toys because he's got Lacanya and coming at coming at him. You know, he's got one of the best yeah. players in the world that is keeping out the team. Yeah. <laughs> consistently. It's actually it's it was quite nice to see them on the field together, although they didn't really yeah. get to cook much. Just I miss seeing Lucanya Am in a Springbok jersey. And yeah. not I would never call for Jesse Creel to be dropped because his form you know, wouldn't allow that to happen. But he's just so uber talented um, that it's sad not seeing him in a spring yeah. jersey week in, week out. But yeah, I think this one has to go to Peter Steff to toy. And with every week, Stevie, it's just particularly this season in a spring box jersey or, or the last year. Let's the last call 12 it, months, basically. Yeah, yeah. It's just been unrelenting Peter Steff to toy. The engine room that it just does not end. It just keeps on going. He is now in wider channels. As you say, he's the Harlem Globetrotter. He just holds the ball in one hand, you know, in outs. I mean, he probably should have scored a try this weekend if um, Sasha Gomezulu could catch a ball um, yeah. on an overlap. But he chose to go with one hand instead of two, um, which then, you know, resulted essentially in a knock-on. But just, he's everywhere. And yeah, so I think I think he he he's definitely worthy of our our inaugural um, Sergio Parisi award. Yeah, cool. And now, unfortunately, the highly droppable award, the Bok Twenty Sixteen award. I feel like this award has like personally hurt me every week. Yeah, it's and and you had to you don't want to speak down upon any um, Springboks, but who who had a um, you know a game that they wish they could kind of go back and 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 play yeah. again. I think I think if you're going to be brutally brutally honest, probably our halfback pairing. Um, you know, I, I thought Mourinho Vandenberg really really struggled. Had some very nice moments. I thought he was very good in defence. I thought he was very far flat on defence. His rush defence was pretty good. Mm. Um, a little bit over eager, conceding that one penalty, which did result in three points. Yes, um, a couple of mistakes. So I'll say, you know, I, I, and I'm a massive Mourinho Vandenberg fan. I think he is the best passer of a ball in the current squad. I think his his distribution is so so good. Um, and technically a very good a very good technical scrum off. Mm. Um, so I thought he really struggled. And I thought that <laughs> on the back of such an assured performance in the first test, I thought Sasha really struggled in the conditions. Um, as you mentioned, you not dropped that ball, which would have been a try. Uh, missed a couple of kicks. Uh, kicked a, a kickoff up in the full, for example. Slipped a few tackles. You mm. know, it was, a, it was a game where it's like, oh, so he, so he is human. And, and this is where, you know, I've, I've been reminding people saying, we just need to remember that he is 22 years old. He's going to make a lot of these mistakes. Um, yeah. I think he's going to get the backing, which is which is important. Um, but we are now seeing what comes with with you know a 22 year old like him, where yeah. he is such a prodigious talent, where he will create those absolute moments of magic. Um, but there will be mistakes in this game, and the more he yeah. plays, the fewer mistakes come, but the magic moments won't go away. Mm. No, I think I think that's fair. Um, I think another one maybe would go to. I don't think Ulrich Lowe had his be- best game, especially after I think last week he had such a good. For me, he mm. nails his name on that number eight jersey, at least while Jasper Vies is away, and I was a little bit less than convinced. I mean, it's hard to point out handling errors in these conditions, but there were just a couple that I think went through his hands, um, and I didn't yeah. quite see I also as much think impact. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I was I was in Jan Krobler. Um, yeah, probably missed two or four lineups. Probably too complicated lineup moves for 
the conditions again yeah you know and i think that's also you know this the new system we're playing and the, the testing that we're doing and you know if they if he's been told to throw these throws fair enough like he's he's going to follow the, the command yeah. right and and that that's just you know him not being able to execute and there were hard conditions um but yeah i, I think he was going to be my next one but i think for for us this one that's i think i do think the most frustrated person would be um Mona van der Berg just because yeah. his first test start and his first big opportunity to be like you know this is the stage where I belong yeah. and I don't think he would have been very happy going off the pitch and I think Grant Williams did actually a lot better when he came yeah. on than van der Berg was able to so unfortunate not a not a award we have would love to give up but just you know Award we we unfortunately have to so that's twenty six. Yeah, but it's fine. Mona van der Berg's about starting to come on for the next ten years. Back, my boy. Yeah, yeah. He, he'll get enough man of the matches to make up for it. So don't worry. Correct, about correct. It. I, um, I really hope you'll see a game start against Argentina because um, I think over yeah. in Argentina in, in these conditions, I think he'll really, really enjoy that. Agreed. Um, and lastly, the Carlos Spencer Award, a little magic moment, Stevie, and this is just for you know, the, the, particularly now these Springboks. I mean, not less so this weekend, but. There's always a little flair. I guess last last week, had we given it, it would have gone to the line out move, right? Um, yeah, and it would have been that. It's, that that's that's what forget moments, you know, just that what really makes cool YouTube highlight reel. Yeah, correct, you know? correct. Um, so, I mean, give it, give us a couple of thoughts on on some of the moments that stood out for you. Yeah, early nomination. Um, it didn't end up counting for anything. Uh, could have been a yellow card to Nick White, but that the Kanye arm first touch. Oh man, taking it over the Look, player with the really gather. Like dirty, ludicrous, dirty. That and and that's the stuff I miss from having him in the team. Like yeah. remember that out the back of the hand try that we They're scored the back. the All Blacks. It's what? just like, yeah. and the thing that you love about the Kanye Am is that he doesn't even flinch while doing it. You He's know, doing he, a mid chewing of the gum, bro. Never been less like... phased in his life. But yes, I think that's that's a. That's a that's a great moment. Um, I think that Cheslin Colby break was was unreal. Um, kind of just getting through the crowd, not able to um, eventually split the defense. Um, mm. Otherwise, I'm trying. I'm kind of racking my brain here to see. Um, yeah, it was, it was it was such a such a bad such bad conditions. It was a difficult. Yeah, I there think, were so many other moments in the first. Yeah, I think let's go ahead and give it to Old Luxy. And he gets the he gets the original award, uh, Carlos Spencer. I mean, you can make a highlight reel of just look on your arm skills, and so you know mm. that little chip and chase. And and let's just go back. Nick White definitely should have got a bloody yellow card for that. That was ridiculous. Yeah, I was, I was you surprised. Think he by made that. a mistake. He apologized. Yeah, but, but, but doesn't also, take the also, away. You, look, you look, but you look at the replay, and he looks at him just before he makes the mistake. It's not like he was going for the ball or anything. He looks at him, has a full look, knows where he's in the air, and still goes into the tackle. Like mm. it's yeah. Like, in, I don't know what world that isn't called. I also actually quickly want to get your thoughts before we move on, on the Malcolm Marks try falling off the back of the mall and whether that should have been allowed. Yeah, I've seen a lot of, I've seen a lot of people get upset about it. I also think, for example, to be fair, he tripped over an Australian player. Um, so, yeah, uh, you know, lots of people saying that there, would have, there was arguments for a penalty try anyway. So, I think it's a bit of a, bit of a moot point. Um, you know, and, whether he and did. It was Noel Olofio who actually shot up straight away as soon as he saw him break off. So he actually did get to the tackle and he he, he wasn't called offside for that. He just bumped off Lolisio. Um I guess yeah. the main the main argument is, you know, he, there's the rest of the the one of his forward pack that weren't then able to get to Malcolm Marks after he had fallen off. Um but Malcolm Marks knew that he had broken off and then went for the line. He didn't try to rejoin, you know. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, I said that the fact of the matter is that there could have been a, a shot for, for penalty trial because of the way that he, he was tripped and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's not like it had any impact on the game. I don't, I think it's, I mean, no. we would have scored it. It would have been a bonus point win anyway. Um, yeah. So it's not, uh, yeah, I've seen a lot of debate about it. I'm mean, sure old um, uh, Nigel Owens will, will, will discuss it in, you know, in between a few cars on his farm. We'll still watch, um, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think. Of all the of all the things to worry about for this Australian fan, I think that's uh, pretty low down on the list. Yeah, um, agreed. Agreed. But I think I think the main thing I want to chat about just before we move on to the Curry Cup is basically a full half of uncontested scrums. Yeah. In at a time where people are talking about the depowerment of scrums, and I think that once again highlighted how 
crap it is when there are no scrums. It it was it made the second half so much less interesting. Yeah. So so much less interesting, and almost like undoubtedly favored Australia. You know, we'd just brought on a bomb squad who could do largely nothing to really. You yeah. know, the, I mean, the, we we brought in our best front row. Squad you know, is where the where the scrum time is. Particularly, there are always more knock-ons in the second half. People are tired. Mistakes happen. This is when yeah, they come on and impose themselves. It's wet, exactly. But they were just not able to do anything. And it shows you what happened, what rugby looks like without a scrum. And I'm not here for it. It's, no, look, it's it was dead boring. Like, there was just having no contest there. It was literally like, okay, you, like, 16 people from each team, just stand there and do nothing whilst the rest of while the ball goes back. It's like you may as well have actually just let them stood and taken like a tap, you know, a short arm penalty from the scrum off at the back. Which, like is, where, which, is, where, which is where they're kind of going with it, isn't it? You know, with the whole idea with the, you know, not letting your scrum from the free kick and stuff like that. And I think it's almost a nice example because I think we saw half an hour, and I think, we're, and with a lot of the rugby players saying, this is kind of like, we can't get rid of the scrums. This is, you know, we need it. And I think mm-hmm. it, took, it took such a big part out of the game um, that I think it really reinforced the necessity of scrums. Um, yeah. So World Rugby, bugger off, we're keeping our scrums. Um, yeah. And hopefully we don't do, have that, do you that think situation that, once again. Do you think that we should have been allowed extra different subs as a result of them being able to have extra loose forwards on? Should we yeah, be able to allow them? I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a difficult one, isn't it, Joe? I mean, you know, for example, do you want to take off, um, let's say, an Oxen chair, who's probably the least mobile? And put on um, Albert Lowe again, you know, mm-hmm. and it's it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because yeah, I mean they had they had two hookers running around, for example, so they had a much more mobile side. Um, didn't have to worry about scrums, for example. Yeah, um, it's it's such a difficult one because the problem is it becomes, yeah, I mean because because the, the, the argument a lot of people are saying is that Australia very deliberately, um, you know, took all the scrums, which I don't think is the case. You know, James Slip is not a person who's going to walk off for tactics. You know, he, no, he, no, he, no, he no, you no. know, of all the players that's going to sit there, you know, don't, don't, don't uh, go question James Slippers, you know, integrity, <laughs> yeah, you know, integrity. Um, and, and Angus Boss. So I think it was a, a, no, oh, 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 it wasn't. I don't think there was, it was, it was, mis- it was just unfortunate that, it yeah, but I think, I think what's interesting about that, I think that's very much why somebody like a Jan Hendrik Vest has so much value to, 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 to the box and having swing props because we will never be in that situation. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. Oxen, you know, we, if, if Malcolm Marx and Jan Kovalad both got injured, yeah. Jan Hendrik Vessel ships to hooker and he's, and yeah. he's, and, 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 they, and you actually have to write down on your team list if they are able to play. So, for example, okay. they write down on a team list that Trevor, for example, can play at one, can play at yeah. can scrum yeah. both sides. Thomas Atoy can scrum both sides. So, if you look to that, at that, so if you look at our, our front row from this past week, you can't weekend, just throw people. Like, I think everyone's in agreement in that, you know? No, no, no. you can't. Australia just to throw their number eight and actually try scrum. You know, yeah, and for example, if, if, if Oxen Chair is, even Oxen Chair, if he's on the park and he's not done as a designated um, tight end option, he can't go scrum a tight end. Interesting. You know? um, so, I mean, we could have had a front row of Vessels, Krabala, Thomas Tatoy. We could have had a front row of Thomas Tatoy, Marx, and um, Vincent Koch, for example. We could have yeah. had a, a front row of Thomas Toy, Jan Ninja Vessels. Yeah, I mean, we so you could have had like three different, yeah, many different, you know, options, three yeah. or four different options there because like, we, don't, we don't really have to worry about uncontested scrums because we've got props. We can play on both sides. Now we've got a hooker that can also play a prop. Barker Van Staden, for example, being designated to be able to play a hooker. Yeah, yeah. You know, true. so he can now move that. To, to, that, to that front <laughs> row. So it's it's an interesting one, isn't it? The fact that, you know, they, we are mm. so make, you know, make sure that we will never have uncontested scrums from our point of view. It's true. It's true because it's the last thing we want because it, it will no, never be can't afford it. it. Right? But also, I think, it's, listen, it, this doesn't happen a lot. If it happens a lot, mm. then I think you, maybe you can have a discussion about you always mm. have to have then additional props on the bench. They aren't a part of your 23, but they have to warm up and be ready just yeah. in, only in the case of, you know, neck, head, head or injuries of sorts. But until that point, I don't think necessarily, you know, there need to be wholesale changes to the rules. Like, mm. as I said, this, we never see really that happen. So unless it's something that happens more frequently, we, I think we can leave it at that. Yeah. Right. Well, Dad, just very quickly before we move on to some footy and cricket, uh, the Curry Cup was uh, happening on the side, yeah, on the, which is very important. And I want to continue making the very important because let's look at the results. Uh, the Bulls beating the Pumas away on you Friday. You want to make it important after the 40 points results. to 24. <laughs> 
No, we'll just say that of the season, really. Um, yeah. Because, and it's particularly this weekend, because uh, a bunch of lads in the Western Province dared to travel up to Johannesburg, <laughs> believing they could get anything out of a game at Ellis Park, and mm. sent them packing with a 41 points to 22 victory. Um, so the Western of, uh, Province. Carlos Spencer Award, there was certainly one in that game as well. Yeah, no, have, you, have you been watching Renzo Duplessis lately? Yeah, he's cooking. This kid's, this kid's come through and coming through the line system, and he's a proper, proper baller. Um, scored a hat trick this past weekend. Um, it's it's a very interesting. We were talking about it before. We were talking the fact that the Curry Cup is largely your fringe players and your young players, and you look at teams like the Bulls, Sharks, and Province, mm-hmm. and the, what separates them from Lions is the supposed depth. Um, I think it's particularly, for example, the Stormers are side, which often struggle to give a lot of people game time. Yeah. Um, throughout not, the squad. Yet, yet we struggle in the Curry Cup. Like, make yeah, it make yet, sense. Yet at the moment, they're not even they're not even looking anywhere remotely close to making, no. um, you know, playoffs. Bulls, for example, who I do think have the biggest squad in South Africa, they're dominating things, as you kind of expect, because you've got players. I mean, you've got like Jakob van der Vault, Henry Immelman. You've got yeah. international players playing in the yeah. Curry Cup, their Curry Cup team, for example. Yeah. Um, the Sharks are slowly starting to get there. They don't really have a lot of their sort of main team players. They beat the Cheers 25 points to 20. And this should actually really be Cheers competition, given the fact yeah. that they should have the strongest squad. It's even out the and, playing field, that win. Because Cheetahs yeah. were, were right on top. And now they're they they, they they're going to make sure that they get to the playoffs. Yeah. So And then Griffin's uh, going down to the Creek. Was, Griffin's have been quite a, a brave side at times during this competition. They've actually pulled off a draw. Uh, almost pulled off a draw against the Cheetahs. But, um, yeah, another loss for them. Um, um, but the Creepers as well also really struggling. So, at the moment, their top four are as follows. Bulls with 31 points. Lions with 28. Both of them with a six wins. Um, but the Bulls have got a draw. Whereas the Lions have got a loss. Uh, the Cheetahs with 24 points. Sharks with 21. That is your top four. Two points behind the Sharks are the Pumas with 19. After that, we're going down to 14 points, which is the Western Province. Creek was with 13. Griffins with two. So it's really a five-team race for that top four. Mm. Massive game this weekend, though. Um, Bulls taking on Greek was Province taking on Sharks. Um, but the big game this weekend is Cheetahs versus Lions. Three, two versus three. Yeah. A win for the Lions could put them in a good sort of eight points ahead of the Cheetahs and, and almost was yeah. guaranteed that playoff spot. Um, and then Griffins versus Pumas. Pumas need to make sure that they make that count bonus. If they get a bonus point victory, for example, um, then if, if if Province were to, to upset Sharks and all of a sudden Pumas come right back into the mix. So it's something mm-hmm. it's sort of moving time in, 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 the, in the Curry Cup. We're seven matches yeah. down. Um, I believe we're playing about 12, I think, in total. I think it is in the uh, in the group stages. Um, yeah. Exactly. Or 12, 11 or 12. So we're, we're, we're moving towards the second half. Um, and the next two to three weeks, I think, will be will be crucial in it. Exactly. And, you know, other than the Griffins, I think you can still, you know, it'll take, it'll take some doing. But the Greek was in the and province can still, in theory, get there. But they're going yeah, to have to get on it now. Yeah. You know, but and it just makes it gives it, it, all these games a little bit more jeopardy to it, which is what we love. Um, but the quality has been there. There's flair, as we said. You play well in the Curry Cup. You earn earn mm. the right to then either get signed by a bigger team if you are, let's say, in the Greek Wars or the Griffins, mm. or you or get the moved into <laughs> yeah, or the or you move into like your URC, and now you're going and touring overseas. You know, yeah. um, so the, the, these are big. It's a big competition in the South African context to uh, like the growth of South African players. So we need a, a quality Curry Cup, and it and it's been decent so far. So yeah, no, really good. But Stevie, the big one, the Prem, it's back, back like it never left. Uh, took it by surprise because it didn't really feel like we had an off season, considering there were Euros and the Olympics. Mm. There was just no time to breathe, which is what we love. Drowned in sports. In sports, you know, yeah, one, correct. One couldn't die any any other way, but yeah, I mean, unfortunately, no massive upsets. And yeah, it's kind for... of a bit of a boring weekend, wasn't it? Last <laughs> night, Hate if it wasn't for Premier Jamie League. Vardy telling Romero to air forth and showing Spurs that he'd won a Premier League, yeah, <laughs> it would have been a pretty boring weekend. I, I and and I would have loved to have seen Jamie Vardy score a second. Even when I saw him, I was like. Gee, this guy, I mean, he became the oldest goal scorer for Leicester, for example, and just such a special career that he yeah. has had. 
but also just journey with Leicester themselves. He could have left to Arsenal the season after he, he won. He definitely could have gone to Saudi as well, for example, and, and, earned, and earned some big bucks for the end for the rest yeah. of his career. Yeah, went down um, to the championship, came back up, scores the goal that gets in the points versus Spurs. And, you know, a Spurs that we both predicted would make top four. So, and, and, yeah. and not, not a bad team. So, a lot of... I didn't play that badly, actually. But in that first half... Madison was back, pulling the strings. Um, yeah. No, they were you good. Know, I, you, saw, you saw a big crowd push, though. That was a crowd that's just yeah. promoted to the Premier League. Yeah. Like, when Vardy scored, they were going absolutely nuts. But, yeah, let's go through a couple of the other results, Stevie. I mean, your, your boys, Man United, I thought it was going to be a dream start to the Premier League as a Liverpool <laughs> fan, watching a 0-0 draw at Old Trafford. Yeah. It just would have made my, my weekend that much more special. But... Um, your new boy Zerky getting that goal. Happy with that? Yeah, I mean it wasn't a, it wasn't a perfect performance. Um, I didn't feel like we were ever going to lose. Um, no, you, you know, had all I, the I, I, you know, yeah. I, mean, I didn't feel like, and I didn't even feel like there was going to be a smash and grab involved. You know, I thought that Fulham just didn't really have that kind of quality in the other end. Um, I, I thought I thought Milner was going to be more. Was going to be like, is this going to be one of those where we're going to have fourteen shots, six on target? Um, it should have been two 0 I mean, how gone Nash missed that chance right towards the oh. end? I don't know. I um, also think Mark Rashford yeah. played a horrible ball, by the way. I don't think that yeah, was a very but, nice yeah, ball. It, was, it, was, it could have been a lot better. I still think he, he should still be very bad. That was more yeah. at, at fault, yeah. It, it was, yeah, so that, that, for example, hopefully is one of those things where it's just, you know, beginning of the season, you're not maybe as sharp as you want to be. But job done, really. Um, so that's the main thing. Um, off, to, yeah. off to three points. You know, somebody was messaging me saying, oh, you guys look terrible. I was like, Ugh. We were never going to lose. We got the three points. It's all already. It's all there. I think August. I mean, I was saying yesterday. I was, I was doing my review of the sort of thing. I said you can't win the Premier League in August. And not that you can lose it, but you have a bad August. It becomes a hell of a long season. Yeah. Um, where you where you can where you always find to try and catch up. So the first first two three weeks. In fact, August in general is just just get to get your dirty one nils two nils. Get your season. You get nine points in your first three yeah. games. You know. Yeah. I think I think it's more so because it's always such an unsettling time the beginning of the season because the new expectations the transfer window is still open if you start yeah. losing those opening games you start making rash decisions you know yeah. that's when you see Casado bought for 120 million pounds um, from, yeah. from, from Chelsea because no. they did so well last season and and you know people start acting a little bit weird whereas if it's if it's a, that settled start um, you know everyone's just a little bit more calm and to be fair, that's exactly how I felt when Liverpool managed to get their first win. And because I just mm. saw that early kickoff to a newly promoted team Both away aside. from home. And I was like, that is an absolute banana peel of a slip up waiting to happen. But the yeah. Schlotty Ball era started with the bang 2 0. Yeah, I think pretty comfortable as well. Um, and, you know, from your perspective, to get a. Um, you know, for Salah to come off and, and start off well, you know, I think that yeah. he's someone that you know that you 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 also relied on him. Um, so I think that for him to to start off well is is the main yeah. thing. Um, it just, I think it just looks that, sharp. I, my my but, feel is that that should have been the opening fixture, though. I always feel that an opening fixture of the Premier League season should always be newly promoted, a, a newly promoted team. Yeah, that is no, that for I, me is like Premier League heritage. That classic Norwich City versus Liverpool Friday night, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I agree. I was also actually thinking even over the weekend potentially that it should be the Championship winner versus the Premier League winner, but that might be a little bit unfair. Um, but I, I agree. Maybe you know what it should be actually. It should be the like the newly promoted team versus the team that just didn't get relegated. Yeah. <laughs> because, yeah. Like, like, like that, 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 that's your match, but you know that stadium's going to be bouncing. Um, yeah. But no, yeah, a couple of the other results. Um, I mean, now they're convincing 2-0 win for Arsenal. I think they're going to be unreal this season. Um, Everton, red card um, mm. for um, your Man United um, friend. What's his name again? Um, I can't completely draw on a blank. Um, Ashley Young, who pulled back the Brighton um, striker or winger Matoma. Shout for Ashley Young still playing, dude. I, I know. I couldn't believe it. I saw red cards. Like, <laughs> you got it? Ashley Young. Ashley Young, why are you still playing? Um, and so Brighton went, became, you know, 3 0 victors there. Um, so that's a big step. Danny Welbeck, dude. Danny Welbeck. 11th season in a row that he scored a Premier League goal. 
that is that that is timeless um so fair play to him um newcastle despite having getting a red card fabian share managed to get the one nil win at home against um southampton not a great sign for southampton considering that they've just but- got promoted and I think that would have been a great opportunity to start off strong. Well, did you did you see did you see the stats of this game? What how no, actually I don't think I have. I just saw the highlights. <laughs> did, yeah, even if you watch the highlights, but nineteen shots from Southampton, four on target, seventy eight percent possession. Jesus. <laughs> Three That's shots from Newcastle, one on target. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Yeah. No, but they weren't that I don't know how many opportunities. No, there there were a couple of blocks on the line to be fair. From 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 um, what's it called Newcastle? But yeah, I mean they would have at least taken a draw there. I mean Newcastle's not an easy place to go away from home in general. So having the opportunity with that red card, I think would have been a, you yeah, know, a bit of a chance missed. Forest Bournemouth one one. Brentford um getting a late winner versus Palace two one. Did you see the controversial is a disallowed goal? I have not. I, I've, I've got everything scheduled for to catch up with a couple of other games I haven't seen. Was it was it wild? Oh, so classic free kick out on the right hand side. You know, shaping up just to give it right across. Gives the keeper the eyes. Hits him on the inside post. Snicks the inside post in far corner. Far corner. But as the ball's about to go in the goals. He blows his whistle for, you know, one of those tassels on the outside of the uh, box yeah. as they're going in. It's not a foul at all. Like, Will Hughes kind of gets in the way of one of the strikes, but it's not a foul. It's like, it's so soft. And, but they can't, so it goes to VAR to check. But because the referee blew the whistle before the ball had gone in the back of the net, they couldn't do anything mm-hmm. about it. So no goal. And it, it was literally, it's on the Eze highlight. It would have been on the Eze, top of the Eze's highlight reel. Oh. And and he's in my fantasy Premier League team, so I'm extra hurt by that. Ah, that's why you really, really hacked about yes, it. I am, I am. But a good start for Brentford because I think Palace are coming for blood this season. Um, Villa a two-one win away, good game and starting strong. I'm really excited to see how Villa do this season. We spoke about them. Um, what well, last they, week? Speak, yeah, they're going to have to have a really good August as well because they need to make sure that they can get as many points as possible before <laughs> the. The, the Champions League stuff starts. When, you know, European yeah. football, that's obviously going to be their biggest challenge for the season. Um, so they need to make sure that they're picking up three pointers galore because yeah. shit's going to go down. Um, yeah, no, they're going to be stress race and, and, and injuries could play a big part in their season. And then, of course, City getting that 2 0 win away to Chelsea, um, convincing. The, the Holland really. to Gorilla re- revenge yeah. match. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, Chelsea fans all of a sudden became Cucurella's biggest fans, whereas previously they were just calling him fifty, you know, million pounds wasted. So yeah. all of a sudden became, you know, really big advocates and learned why that they were resorting to his previous opinion. Just one of them yeah. players maybe can just step it up on the global stage, just not the not the club stage. Um I mean yeah. maybe you'll have a good season. It's it's unfair to write him off just just yeah. one game, but I mean but... that's what you, that's what you get for seeing a song about yourself in front of a crowd like that, calling out one of the best <laughs> yeah. strikers, in the, yeah. calling out the best striker in the world, who wasn't even playing in the Euros. Yes, it's the weirdest song ever. And yeah, yeah, no, very that's bizarre. Bizarre. Um, definitely after a couple a couple of babies, and then last night, as we mentioned, Leicester City versus Tottenham one one, probably the biggest um, shock, I guess. But mm. that was it, Stevie. So. You know, let's not go make some outland- outlandish decisions, but Liverpool are going to win the league. Um, and that's just... <laughs> Best on beating the newly promoted Ipswich. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True. When they had Ed Sheeran, and Ed Sheeran had to leave at halftime, and that's when we started winning. So I'm bloody glad he had to leave. He had to go yeah. for a concert in Serbia. You know what? Not actually acceptable, Ed. Yeah, especially you considering you he's just invested in the club. So Yeah, like, the Serbians can wait. The Serbians can wait, exactly. Stevie, let's get on to our, I think, our first true love. And Test Cricket was back. And it was so good. <sighs> yeah. And we got the series win, winning the second Test match by 40 runs, having drawn the first one, largely as a result of a lot of rain. But it wasn't without its scares, Stevie. Some worrying batting collapses and first innings totals that was largely saved by Dane Pete. 
Um, but yeah, I, I mean, let's let's go let's go through it. I mean, our first day started off horribly. I think we were yeah. about eighty for seven or eighty for eight. We managed to scrape to one sixty all out. Dane Pete not out on thirty eight, and only other real runs were betting in with twenty eight. Jamar Joseph with five for thirty three. Jaden Seals three for forty five. I was very impressed with Jaden Seals. He's getting the ball to that swing in off the left hand, and then yeah. reverse swing as well is pretty insane. That he's doing Shout that. Shout out Nando Berg as well from batting yeah. perspective. Stuck around, I think about twenty or twenty one. Yes, odd. yeah, great. I mean the tail end. I think in the in the both innings the final wicket stand was the biggest partnership of the innings, which is crazy. Um, yeah. But then, you know, uh, that was responded with, with 144 by West Indies. So good work from the Proteas. And your boy, yeah. um, Bian Mulder, four wickets for 32 and Nandre Berger, three wickets for 49. But Vian Mulder, I've never seen him bowl with that much intent. He actually had a bit of zip and a bit of zap to him, bro. A bit of zap. Oak was moving it around. I mean, a couple of them were corkers. Yeah, it wasn't I like know, it was they just were. They were bowling half trackers and being. And, yeah, it was, it, was, it was proper test bowling. Like, no, it was good. Awesome. Like, I was and that and bold was wild. Great court and bold. And you know what it was? It, it felt like he was hitting the deck, whereas I feel like Van Mulder has always just been like a put it he in an area. Through. Push yeah. through. Like, it's one of those motions. It's like. He's Jimmy Anderson, but he can't swing the ball. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, that just like repetitive motion. And it's like, you know, high 120s. He was getting it, you know, low 130s, so a little bit faster and hitting a bit of the deck, getting it to pop a little bit. I, I'm saying I loved it. Bit of a yeah. bit of a sensation for me. But yeah, I mean, Jason Holder largely saved their innings getting um, 54 not out. He's just so good. Yeah, he he. I mean, he's still only thirty two. Feels like he's been there for twenty years. It's insane. Yeah. Um. He'll be there for another another couple, and then finally the deck flattened out a little bit. And to be honest, I think you could probably question that initial decision to bat from um mm. Kemba Babuma because geez, it was not a good wicket to bat on on day one. Um, which is testament to all of those wickets. But then we managed to put on a decent total of two forty six Stevie and. Mm. The same story of a lot of starts, but not a lot of converting. Carl, eventually, the highest runs, Carl Varane, 59, Adam Markram, 51, are only two half centuries. Um, Jaden Seals picking up six for 61, um, and Wari Khan, two for 21. Um, yeah. Jaden Seals pairing us apart. Yeah, but an important innings for Ed Markham because he's been under so much pressure by not being able to score any runs away. So yeah. I, I, as much as it would have been really good to see him kick on to get a 50 in his last innings, it, to just at least remind people that. Because he's also, I mean, it's funny how he was a player who had bought so much credit, but now his credit's run out. And now he's becoming a bit of a player where as soon as he fails, everyone's like, oh, no, don't back him. So yeah. important for him to get some runs. Carl Varane, I think, as well, is very wary of the fact that uh, Ryan Rickleson's lurking. Yeah. He just scored some runs. I think that was the one when Mulder got, got like a 35 as well. Yeah. So so chip chipped him with some runs there. Um and uh Yeah, so... exactly. But I mean that's it. Stubbs Stubbs twenty four in the second innings and twenty six in the first. So it's like so it's frustrating stars to Zorzi yeah. getting thirty nine in the second innings, you know. As you said, very Mulder, to Zorzi, though, by the way, just in, in general, I very much feel like we've got our opening pair, which oh, is which no is really good that to see. He's getting dropped. He he's there for a long, long time. He's he's looked so comfortable at the international level. Yeah, so I think I think the fact that him and him and Mark, I think him and Mark can comment with each other as well quite nicely. Left, so right, I hand. think it's yeah. So I think I think I think we've got our opening pair, which is not. I mean, I think I think Shuki also said he said you know our, our batting lineup is so young. If you take away Bavuma and 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 Aiden Malcolm, it's such a young batting lineup. Yeah. Um, you know, in 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 Kyle Varain and David Bettingham and Tristan Stubbs and Donny Zorzi, uh, even Vian Mulder. You know, so it's not an experienced batting lineup. Um, yeah. So he says that that does leave us, you know, we are going to have these these shuffles, for example, and these bad mm -hmm. starts. He says, but in t but at the end of the day, he's like, what can we do? They have to play. Yeah, you know, we don't play enough Test cricket to be able to just move them in and out. They just have to keep playing so they can get used to what Test cricket is. Yeah, but exactly. um, you don't have five match line, Test series is to like you know play around with yeah. three different options in one series. Yeah, it's not how it works. Yeah, so it's I think I think we just have to ride a bit of a wave. Um, but yeah. I'm very happy with, with with what I'm seeing in general. Yeah. Um, I think I think we are starting to get a bit of a balance. We still have to have sort of that decision about, you know, I think obviously you know we come back playing South Africa. Dan Pete drops out, and you bring in an extra seamer there. Marco Janssen probably comes in for Vian mm. Mulder potentially. Um, mm. So you could have, yeah. But that, I think that's that that also becomes a very nice situation where we talk about a fragile batting lineup. 
you could then start putting it, if, if, especially if Elmer Wilson bowl like he did, you then put in a Marco Janssen ahead of Van Peet, and you've got a Janssen, Rabada, Nanjay Berger, Vian Mulder. That means you've got express pace in Nanjay Berger. You've got a left arm option in, in as, well, and, as well, two left arm options in Nanjay and Marco Janssen. One that swings yeah. a little bit more, one's a bit more all out pace. Yeah. KG and Vian, for example, and then you've mm. got Kesh, you know, and, but yeah. also from a batting perspective, you're suddenly moving Kesh you're down to me. nine, you're moving yeah. Marco Janssen up to eight. Vian Mulder at seven, Rabada is now sitting at at sort of ten, and you've got Nandre at eleven. Batting wise, it just looks a lot better anyway, and it's a good bowling lineup. Yeah, no, agreed. I think, it, and and you know, kudos to to Vian Mulder who came under a lot of scrutiny from myself and a lot of backing from Stevie. So I'll give you the benefit of the doubt on that one, Stevie. That he he yeah, played out the match. He showed, he showed enough promise to be able to earn his spot in the next one, which yeah. I don't think we could have said many other times when he's played for the Proteas. So um, very frustrated that he, I think he had two opportunities. Well, yeah, two opportunities to really get the fifty monkey off the back. He showed us what he could do now a little bit more with the bowling, and he showed promise with the bat. Um, but he just, I just find he tends to get out a little bit cheaply. So if he can give us a bit more there, um, you know, then I, 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 I'm, I'm all for it with that, with his selection. I think the last question marks and the people who have the point to prove is for me, Verena and Stubbs. Um, Stubbs yeah. just needs to, I mean, he got that one um, score of 60 odd in the series, which was great for him. First um, half century in, in the Proteus Test jersey. But, um, you know, and Verena also getting that one. But, I mean, I am I right Rickleton to say that every single four. batsman, bar Beddingham and Rickleton, got a at least a fifty, I think, in the series. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I just think with Rickleton's form, you can't. And this is great, and and I think he, I'd love Conrad to be able to, you know, give Rickleton a, a run of games because that's what I don't think he has. Well, given. I would like to see him a three, and Stubbs for me should be competing with Ray. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, the problem is. I'd wear you know, Rickleton, Rick, Rickleton, I think, has, hasn't been given enough opportunities consecutively. He's been given now probably like, what, five, six, seven test matches, but they've all been dotted Spiratic. around over like three different yeah. years. So it's just like something that Stubbs has now been afforded. Has, you know, he, he's been picked and he hasn't been dropped since um, and, you know, only really had one real inning. So I think we should, you know, give that same opportunity to Rickleton. Um, and see how how Rickleton can do in the gloves at test level. Yeah, no, I, I was, I'm I'm such a big Rickleton fan. Um, you know, he's and he's and he's just been shitting runs. <laughs> is another <laughs> way of putting it across all three formats in the last few seasons. It's just no, been he has been. silly. Yeah, like, and, and name, it hasn't name, quite name, worked out when he's come into the Proteus lineup, but it's ha- it has to. Like he yeah, looks good, but it just starts, and I think that'll come with time and and a bit yeah. Of well, I think that's a nice way to lead into the next segment, which is the T20s. Yeah. Which well, we'll start on that, Friday. Sorry, Stevie. We, uh, we, we have to talk about the... We need to get Kesh. The goat. The goat. The goat. Kesh. I mean, 171 wickets now become South Africa's leading um, wicket taker in tests as a spinner, overtaking Hugh Tayfield, who, for those who don't know, played in like the 1940s, 50s, 60s um, for South Africa. And so he's now gone ahead by one, and Paul Adams was the next one with 134. And just, I would argue, after KG Rabada, South Africa's most important cricketer across all formats in the last 10 years, maybe. You know, he made his debut eight years ago, so maybe maybe we'll, we'll give it five years. Rather. Yeah, I think the last that's, five years that, where, he's become, where, he's, where he's come. Yeah. But yeah. The way he was just a test bowler, and I remember that Australia tour that he went out to, and Dale Stane got injured, and he had to bowl stupid amounts of overs, and we won that yeah. test in Perth. That was him arriving on the scene, and he was like, cool, he has, we've got this test spinner, amazing. He's taking over from Imran Tahir. And since then, he has become an unbelievable ODI um, bowler, an unbelievable T20 bowler, but is also captain both of those two limited overs formats. So, yeah. and, and now captains in SA 10, 20 side. So just a massive figure now in the South African circuit. 
and and he is the epitome of hard work you know he had weight issues for example he had yeah, to, he had exactly. to drop a lot of weight he had to grow up and apparently they reckon that nobody bars more deliveries in like a during the week until he just goes and he's relentlessly just practicing 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 yeah. before before test match before like, he's there first and he's just bowling and bowling and bowling so mm. yeah if you want to look at work rate and he's just an all-around nice guy um shout out yeah Kesh. yeah no, shout out Kesh. Honestly, what a what a guy. Like no no issues whatsoever. Always, you know, just kind of underspoken, but you can tell very well respected within the squad. Yeah. Leads by example, as you said, like had troubles in the beginning of his career. It was kind of just going through the motions, and now you know one of South Africa's biggest cricketing figures. So shout out him, and I don't think he's slowing down anytime soon. So I think he could be here for at least another four years. And you know, spinners can extend that stay. It is quite yeah. funny. He got player of the series and didn't score a single run. Which is hilarious <laughs> across three yeah. innings. But to be um, fair, I think I think I think I think I think the hopes we had of him becoming an all rounder. No, I, I think no. That, I think that yeah. I think that ship has, fir- has firmly sailed. He is he is the, he is actually very similar to a Dale Stain, just in their batting style. Just swipes at everything. Yeah, you know, clear the, clear the front leg, um, and just just have a bash. But yeah, shout out to him. We're not going to measure your success on your batting, so don't worry. Um, no, we need the no, leading no. wicket sore. But yeah, let's get into the T20 series that's starting this Friday. Yeah, right. So we've got a T20 squad announcement and uh, some very big things to talk about. Uh, so out. No Clarkson, no Quinton, no Miller, and no Shambo, Shamsi. They are all playing in the CPL, which obviously, they're, so they're actually all in the Caribbean. So it's going to be one of those series. You're probably going to check them, like watching the team in the stands, like how's it goes. Um, <laughs> but um, so they will not be involved. And we have rested Mark Janssen, uh, Kesh, as well as KG. Yeah. Um, the big call-ups, it's, it's a pretty straightforward squad from the, sort of the World Cup. But some big call-ups are um, Patrick Kruger has been retained. Uh, Donovan Ferreira has been called up. Vian Mull has been retained. Liz mm-hmm. Williams is in there. Rickleton's obviously is, is in there. Um, two big call-ups in uh, Quinn Amapaka. Mm. You you know shout out West Indies for, for, for organizing team. Yet? No, well, that's the thing. So shout out for West for, for for West Indies for having this in the private school holidays. So he's on holiday at the moment. <laughs> yeah. So it allows that's him to, to, to jump over um, because I think they only get back in September. So he's got a bit of a break then. Um, Damn, first, by the way, first you... Malaza, and now now um, Quinnamapaka. Hey, just South yeah. African matriculants of 2024. Shout out you guys. I mean. Don't send your talent scouts to Craving Week. Send your talent scouts to Matric Rage because <laughs> yeah. that's where the talent's at. You just go, to, go down to VAC in December and just start start, start picking out people. Makes a burning um, Yeah, so he's been called up, as has Jason Smith, a, a David call up for him, 29-year-old batsman from, from the Dolphins. Been around the block, so very, very talented. And I think taken a while for that talent to really come through. Um, a big recall is Rassi Fanadusson, who's not the youngest, and he's been included. And the reason I say it's mm. a very big recall is because uh, Matthew Breska has been left out. Mm. Now, you'd think long-term for Rob, you'd want to go give Breska the chances that, that, that Rassi's getting now. Um, mm. it, for me, that is the, the weird selection in inverted commas. And I, and I love Rassi Fanadusson. I think he's he is oh. the most frustrating player because I think when he bats positively, he is so, so good. But he's got that habit of taking long and then trying to catch up. But I think when he's a very positive form to get for a type of player, I think he, I think he is world class. At one stage this year, he was the second leading highest uh, scorer in T Twenty cricket across the world. I think it was Baba Azam, him, and then Rickleton. Yeah, um, I think with Rassi, we saw it before the last World Cup there. He wasn't announced in the squad for the World Cup, but he actually went to the West Indies for that series um, yeah. to play and. I think he, 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 he captained it. He did captain. He was. He's yeah. a, I think he's just the dad, to be honest. He's he, <laughs> yeah. he, he's just the dad of the group. He makes sure that the light he's, is on he's, bed he's, on time. He's, he's the, the skulk Brits. He's the skulk Brits role. He's over there. He's organizing the golf. He's making sure everyone's sorted. Yeah, he's he's like, Yeah, and I mean, he's yeah. also like the ultimate professional, right? So I think there is a point. And, and also like, a nice guy. Yes, yeah, setting yeah. standards as well with you know quite a few of the big names. You know, left out the next biggest, um, almost senior senior player will be Lungi and Giri, you know, and then probably yeah. Reza Hendricks and or obviously Aiden Mark from the captain. But you know, I think maybe it's just to make sure that there's a bit of a, a core mm. um, leadership group. But you got to feel for Bretzka after it was a really good vitality blast for him. You know, one of the leading run yeah. scorers there, but just unfortunately hasn't really taken his opportunities when he's played at T20. So I mean, he'll no doubt go back and you know, especially with the SA20. Um, auction coming up. We'll be interesting to see if he retains a spot at um, in Durban. But a lot of these players, Jason Smith, um, Quinn Mapaka, 
you know, Patrick Kruger, Donovan Ferreira, Vian Mulder, who are, you know, kind of the newish and maybe like the, the outskirts of the squad are being rewarded for good South African domestic cricket as well, which is amazing mm. because that just tells the rest of the people that are playing in South Africa, we see you keep and crafting. you will get, yeah. Yeah, exactly. keep crafting. If you, if you perform, you're in, that's it. So yeah, really excited for that. Um, as far as the West Indies team goes, it's largely a really um, strong one. The only, only notable exemptions have been uh, Andre Russell, Azari Joseph and Jason Holder. So yeah, a couple of different, I think it's three T20s there before we then go yeah. um, on an ODI. Friday, to Sunday, Tuesday, and then we come back for a while. And then we go to our first, I think it's our first ever tour to Afghanistan. It is, yeah. Um, Which so, will be good. So that is because, in, I mean, that, that's a, for them, there'll be a bit of um, you know payback for the semifinal of the World Cup. Obviously, that's the yeah. T20. But, you know, they're, they're a great outfit. And, um, you know, a team that can't um, be... Um, kind of discounted anymore as like purely a, a, a fringe team. But Stevie, before we get into our predictions, we've got to talk about Drickus Duplessis. And yeah. the man had South Africa in hysterics very early on, on Sunday morning. And it was a, well, against against the bookies odds, a shock win. Yeah. Getting shock Israel win. Anasanya in the fourth round, managed to get him to tap out. And I'll inform you of what happened in the fight because I believe you were you were you were dossing. Um, yeah, but no, to be honest, a couple, a, couple, a couple too many lagers meant that I did unfortunately miss it. Yeah, saw the highlights, but yeah, I, I was up early and I was grateful when he put him to sleep because then I also went straight back to sleep. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was to be honest, it looked like Israel the Sunday was all over him, and up until that point, he had been landing all the shots and he had looked like Drexus was was. Mm kind of being shaken by a lot of the hits but then just hit him with a with a hook and then it was interesting because Adesanya then called him back and said come let's let's box now and yeah. I don't think it was, it, that was a weird moment win. because he was going after Israel who then pointed and it was like and what kind Israel of said, come, <laughs> okay, now we're going but I think I think that was also I think he was bluffing Drickers to a point I don't think he was leading on to how hurt he was and yeah. that's what I also find incredible about these these athletes is that I know one of the smallest hits would put me in probably a coma. And they yeah. just take hit after hit after hit. Eventually, Jesse said, cool, let's go. Another couple um, shots against him, got him to the ground in the chokehold, bang, tapped out, and he gets the win. Obviously, we had Eben and Sia walking well, out. That's, and, that's when we yeah. won, dude. Yeah. You know, you got those two walking out with you. We'd, we'd, already won, we'd already won the fight then. Yeah, half of America I've seen. Who are these people that Drickus is walking out of? They are huge. You know, no idea what <laughs> who's Sia Khaleesi or even Etzebeth are. I mean, they were in the press conference and no one's bothering them because they have no idea who these folks are. It's quite funny. Well, did, did you hear that apparently um, Eben puts brandy, some brandy and coke into um, Drickus's monster can? And there's a video of is taking no. a sip and he kind of like takes a sip and he puts it down. He's like, oh, post fight, I was thinking, post fight, yeah, post fight. <laughs> I was thinking pre fight. I was like, Brandon, they... <laughs> well, I mean, if there was ever something to have before, before, before a, a USC fight, oh, then, then it's probably a bit, a bit of a bit of Brunners. That is uh, great. But John, um, shout out, shout yeah, out, Drickers. I mean, that was massive. Obviously, the, it started getting you know quite personal between the two. You know, who's the real African champ? And to be honest, yeah. I it just for me it sucked to see because I actually really liked Izzy beforehand, and it's like more. And I, th I was so glad that at the end they kind of they seemed to you know kind of speak it out, and there was yeah. a lot of peace made, I guess. But as they both said at the end, Africa wins. You know, either of them win. We have an African champ, which is what we love. But now with Drickus winning, they yeah, I need to start saving up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You need to save her for a, a lifetime because those tickets are going to be insane. No, they're going to be silly. They're going to be yeah. absolutely silly. In I fact, also, should I, we, also we, I, I might start Dana slipping White. into Dana White's DMs and maybe we'll get some between two fans uh, accreditation. True. Uh, we need to start covering a lot more UFC so we can at actually get day, we are at, We are actually a UFC channel. Yes. Um, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, but yeah, I, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. I just have a sense that he's still not going to do it. Um, but it, if UFC came to South Africa for Drickus, it would be monumental. So shout out Drickus, 
unbelievable and just wrapped up such a good weekend of a month um, that has been of, of South African mm. sport. Um, so we get into the predictions, Stevie. Yeah, correct. I need, to, I need to put you... So if the people decide... Hang on. So I'm just wondering. So if people decide that you lost last weekend and this I win be this for, weekend... This could be for this the could title. Be this could be for the title. Massive. Yeah. Massive. Absolutely massive. Yeah, no, it's huge. Um, okay. Well, we'll start off with the T20 then. South Africa versus West <laughs> Indies. Um, <laughs> that first one is... Where, where is it being played? Um, I think they're all being played at the same place, to be fair. Taralba. Um, interesting, but yeah, Stevie, do you have, we'll start with runs and then we'll do wickets. Do you have a score in mind? I do. I do. I can um, tell you're not convinced I've, I've, I've already won this battle psychologically. Yeah. Okay. 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 We'll start with runs. Let's go. Three, two, one. Essay by 50. West Indies by 30. Whoa. <laughs> Hang okay, let's do wickets then. Yeah, three, two, one. So that was by, by three. Okay, sure. That I is throw a bit of a curveball in there. No, I just see where your patriotism lies. Good to know. Good to know. Um, Look, at the end of the day, it's probably reverse psychology actually. If you want us to win, then let me because now, 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 SA will dust them easy. It's a win, it's a win win, I guess. But yeah. really a win for me. Um, <laughs> but well, okay, no, cool. actually, it's a win-win for me. It's a, it's, it's, it's. It could be a very much a lose-lose for you. True, true. Um, okay, well, let's move on to the Villa Arsenal game, which is obviously big because you know Villa are kind of attributed for derailing Arsenal last season in their, um, you know, what was it then? Another failed attempt at a title race. So yeah, added to the list. This time, <laughs> Villa will be will be hosting them. Um, do you have a score in mind for this one, Stevie? Yeah, I do. Okay, me too. I'll count to send three, two, one, two one, one Arsenal. Arsenal. Okay, okay. So now we've got the same score difference. So that's not. Um, Contentious. That's not going to come into it. So yeah, but if it's I guess two nil, Steve wins. The, the, the decision that people come to in the in the poll that we put on our social channels, go follow us on Instagram at Between Two Fans. Um, to, <laughs> <Shut up>. number <laughs> two, um and 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 cast your vote in there because yeah, that, that's going to set the precedent for how we're going to go about future ones as well. And then lastly, yeah. cheaters versus lions, a big mm. two versus three clash um, in Bloemfontein. Stevie, do you have a score in mind? Mm. Okay. As do I. Three, two, one. Lions, Lions by three. Seven. Ooh, I also think Lions are cooking. Lions yeah, they are, are I mean, cooking. I must admit, like, I wasn't feeling very confident. And then this weekend, I'm just watching it. And like, they're just, I don't know where this has come from. Is one well, course he's a goat, by the way. The Lions junior coach. He's not taking the curry cup. Like that junior side also plays such good rugby. I also think it's a great system and all teams should do that is start to give these junior coaches a chance at Curry Cup yeah. because as much as it's a chance for the players to prove themselves, it's also a great opportunity for yeah. coaches. And so, also, they know the players, you know, like yes. you, this, yeah. these, are, these are players you've been working for the last two, three yeah. years. Now yeah. you're just getting extra few more players, but your systems and stuff like that. And this is where also we're seeing how the Lions very unashamedly go and sign the best youngsters in the country, um, and, we're, and which is why they're producing so many young players. Mm. Um, and he's mm. been a big, big role in that. So I really like the fact that yeah, he's he's helped sign them. He's brought them through at under twenty, under twenty one level, and now he's coached them at a Curry Cup level. I think it's a very nice progression. Yeah, no, agreed. Stevie, great pod. In between, you know, a lot going on. And next week we'll have Paralympics. We're going to have South Africa hosting um, the All Blacks at Ellis Park. All Blacks, yeah. I mean, the Premier League will now then be, you know, kind of three weeks in. So a lot coming up, but it was a, a great episode and a great week for South African sports and a good week to be hosting a sports podcast. So happy, happy us, hey? Happy, you, know, you know, I'm just, yeah, life's good. Life's good. At the end of, I mean, this weekend, for example, Saturday, I'm just going to have to put a couple of TVs out at 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 the bra because there's there's Premier League all afternoon, there's Curry Cup all mm. afternoon, there's mm. T20 on, on Friday night, there's T20 on Sunday night. Formula One's back this weekend as well. Sure, like it's just all happening. Yeah, no, it's phenomenal. 
Thank you very much, Stevie, and everyone for listening. I appreciate you getting this far. If you have got this far, please do like the video if you're watching on YouTube um, or share it if it's a podcast or subscribe. Um, a little bit goes a long way and we really appreciate your support. But up until next week, we will chat again soon. And once again, thank you very much for listening.